Here we are again. We're back with the Contractor Corner live once again for your weekly dose. I am your host, Johnny V, and we're here with Jay Carter. Hello, hello. Hello again. Um, let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, today, it's an interesting topic. Uh, we're going to be talking a bit about quality control. And we all know that that's something that's uh, that we all kind of struggle with. It's really important because, you know, that's bad quality. We're constantly trying to move forward in a deficit of work. And it's impossible to move forward in time looking back, mm -hmm. right? What happens? We trip over ourselves. We cause more deficit of work. And it does nothing but bleed our profits dry. And mm -hmm. there's a few ways that we could talk about controlling it. Um, I know, Jay, you have a couple of good points to bring yeah up. so i'm gonna i'm gonna share with you what we do as a company and how we um manage our, our quality control so first of all um you know we identify that most production quality control issues are uh, manageable um with good process okay so um first of all we want to make sure that we have our stakeholders identified so you know we do a thing called lessons learned on every project okay and here's my rules to it i accept every mistake that's happened for the very first time i accept it okay and no matter what it is no matter how big it is no matter the mess and i know it's crazy like beyond complete negligence all right uh, i accept it but it comes with a a, um, a a process that has to be followed so let's say we have a big mistake that's made on a job i bring everybody in that was involved in the job from the laborer to the sales rep to the whole team everybody's coming in whether they had a direct and we I ask three things. I want three lessons learned about what happened, how it happened, and how we're going to prevent it. All right. So give me those three lessons learned, and we're going to create a policy or an SOP to correct it. So I'll give you a perfect example of this. Um, we had an issue with a subcontractor trying to bill basically on Thursday and expected to be paid on Friday. Somewhere down the line, it was told to him that that was acceptable and our accounts payable paid him once or twice that way. Um, and I caught it and I said, no, we're not doing that. So the repercussions of that, obviously an upset subcontractor, delayed job, blah, 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 yeah. lessons learned. Okay. So the way we manage that, and again, it go, it applies directly to quality. I'm just using this as the example, because it happened on Friday, um, is a new SOP was created. The whole team is now aware of it, signed off on it, and they had buy-in into the, the resolution. The reason I'm not coming there and saying, no, 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 you're going to do it like this and this and that. Um, is that I found that that method of just telling people what they need to do or shoulda, coulda, doesn't work. It doesn't work. The mistake continues to happen again and again. Um, and it's because you never slow down long enough to get people to buy into the solution. So when people don't feel like they're empowered or that they have a, um, a stake in the outcome, they will stop taking um, accountability. And when you lose accountability on your teams, you lose everything. That's where quality control problems happen is where somebody feels that they're not accountable to it. And we know this happens in construction. Oh, well, the guy just did it his way. I didn't, you know, they knew it was wrong. They didn't say anything. They didn't do anything about it because they weren't empowered to, right? So when you bring everybody in and you ask them the solution to the problem, right? Nobody wants to be in that position to begin with, but there's some empowerment that goes on, all right? So those excuses are no longer acceptable at my table. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not punishing anybody and I'm not pointing my fingers at anyone. I'm not blaming anyone. And I'm not trying to solve it either because my guys and the people I have in, in place, they're smart enough to know better. Okay. What they don't have is the empowerment to actually take action and to feel heard when those things are occurring. Right. So again, this has worked very, very well for us and not having things reoccur. So again, after it's re reoccurred, what do you think I pull out? I pull out those lessons learned and I go, hey, you know what? Like last time you promised that we wouldn't manage our mistakes this way. What happened? Do I need and do I need to go further? Sometimes it's, you know, we're, we're letting people go because we know that they can't keep their word. We know that their quality isn't really, they're not sincere about it because yeah. if it was, they would have followed their own suggestions and actually followed through with it. And again, accountability is the most important thing you can have when it comes to quality control. If you do not have accountability from the top to the bottom, okay? So that includes management, that includes the salespeople. Like there's everyone with these little pieces of, of input and ability to change it. I mean, if the sales rep and the project manager miss the fact that you had this, you know, obvious quality control issue and then the crews neglected it, whose fault is that? 
It's the companies, and I'll tell you yeah. exactly why. It's because they never empowered someone along the line and made it part of their routine and made it a part of their commitment to you know take care of those things. And oftentimes, what I find is accountability um, is directly related to quality. Okay, if your team's empowered and they're accountable to to you know the process, to the company, to the system, to their name, to all these other things. All right, those problems don't happen. All right, people people will stop and do what's right um, because they feel accountable to it. Simple as that. Well, how do you do that? Right again, it's about building these processes into your business that build that and take you out of the equation. Because often, I think a lot of owners put themselves into the equation because they're there pointing their fingers, saying you could have, you should have. Well, you show me then. How am yeah, I supposed right. to do it? Right. Well. The, the, the empowerment thing, I want to dig into that a little bit deeper, Jay, because sure. it's like, okay, we're implementing processes, obviously, right? Which mm -hmm. is fantastic. The empowerment thing, I mean, it's arguable a lot of a lot of mistakes are made just because people don't care, right? They don't care about Ooh. you. They don't care about the company and the right. vision. How, how do you define this, like, empowerment? Very easily. Um, you know, whoever has the power, all right, to control the quality, right, right, is empowered, right? So if somebody knows that they are you know, defying our, our quality control standard, which we do have, by the way, it's all documented. It's very standardized. All right. We make it clear. Like we do our part as a business. I'm not just going out there and being like, that's not good enough. No, okay. I'm saying here's the example. Here's what you know. Like we, like everyone starts off with a, um, a list of details or a book of details that we provide to them of how our product gets installed. We have training, we have other things. So the quality control issues go down there by standardization. Right. So we've standardized a lot of our stuff, um, but there's always details that are outside of that. When there's a problem, we have open communication. So if somebody in my business doesn't know, they know who to talk to to get the, the knowledge of how to know. But quality is never if they put their hands on it, they own it. All right. If they were involved in it, they own it. If they had eyeballs and they seen it, they own it. All right. Nobody's no one's off the hook even if they didn't install because we're all a crew. We're all on one thing. So if that crew caused, you know, a leak or caused a problem, no problem. You know what? We're going to, we're going to investigate it to the point that we know what it is. We're going to stop. And I don't think many companies do. And we're going to bring everybody in that could have controlled that problem from happening. And they're going to explain to us how it happened so that they know for sure. All right. It's not going to be a guess. It's not going to be a, you know, back and forth. It's very yep. black and white. And I'm going to get, three lessons learned. What are we not going to do? What are we going to do? Like what, how do we prevent it from happening again? And I'm not, I'm not demanding that they do that. I'm, I'm literally saying, yeah, I'll accept that or no, I won't accept that. Give me another lesson learned. How do we prevent right. that from happening? So now it's crystal clear, right? There's no, there's no confusion around this was a screw up. This is how we fix it. This is what I'm committed to. I have a part in this. And again, it's reinforcing that everybody's like responsible. I mean, I bring laborers in, right? Like, again, a laborer has a, an opportunity here to move up as well. What did you, like, what part could you have played in the role? Everybody gets input. Yeah, and that's, right. that's important. Yeah. And, and, and it keeps it off the owner because, again, if the owner, if the management, like the people who are truly not on the job site, try to get involved and try to do it, like, you know, the, the way that I think we were all taught, like, screaming yelling like none of that shit works man like it, it and especially with the younger generation it's just it's through one ear and out the other and it's almost like you may as well tell them to repeat it over and over again because they never learn they never get better at it they always you know it just it, keep, it keeps coming back and i fought it for i mean in my business it's, it's pretty prevalent right so i mean that's that's how we manage it yeah so and I like that because you're, you're, you know, building a process. Everybody gets to be involved in the process. That's mm -hmm. where the empowerment comes from. Um, they all have, you know, their feet is all held to the fire, but everybody is involved and can give the input on how to change things and how to make things better, Absolutely, which is really cool. Um, I remember uh, to shift gears a little bit. Uh, this is a few lives ago that you were talking about uh, how you had uh, an inspection uh, checklist. Yep. That, mm -hmm. that helps talk a little bit more, more about that. I think yeah. So again, coming back to process. Um, so we have a pre-roof inspection that gets done. All right. It's full. Like, again, that's the sales to hand off production. One of the biggest places we see problems occur is always in the sales to production handoff. Most quality control issues are actually related to when the order was taken. What were the details of the order? 
All right. And then how did it get passed off to the crew? Because what happens here, and again, a lot of owners are guilty of this, is that, you know, an expectation set during the sales process. There's details that are shared back and forth. Most contractors are generally disorganized in my humble opinion. Yeah. And that information doesn't get captured and passed on properly to production. And there's not a production to, or from sales to production handoff where we meet, the production manager talks to the salesperson, all right, where they are talking about those details. They are making sure that everyone's got clear understanding and that there's no broken telephone, all right? And then from that point, the production manager is dealing with the, the customer, all right? That's the clear connect, like that's the differentiation because too many times, the guy that sold the job gets dragged all the way through the job. Now we have two figureheads, whether it be your foreman or whoever. And what it does is it creates a tension or it creates a, a miscommunication a lot yes. of times. Yes. Yeah. And and that's where problems start to occur. And that's where guys don't give a shit. Like that's where, like, again, how many times have you had five or six changes on a job? Right? And almost always, isn't it interesting? Almost always, when you've had a high number of changes. Um, a customer that was indecisive or that you pushed through the job because you needed to get the job done, all right, where there was a lot of detail, a lot of changes, that's where all of a sudden these, you know, quality control issues come up. And when you are on the tools and you're in the field, they may not seem so serious, but you back up and you have, you know, crews running jobs and you'll see that those little problems become catastrophic to the point you can't, you can't step away from the job, right? If you're not watching your crews and every step that they take, you're going to have these issues, right? And again, it's a fundamental structural issue with the company. So this, we we, we should have started with that because that, yeah. that comes at the beginning of the process, right? So right. kind of like stepping it back. And, and post-inspection too. So again, we have yeah. a standardized post-inspection that's done, you know, again, third party. If that's a document that's basically, you know, confirming all our details were followed, all the, you know, the stuff that was was to be produced was to the standard that we accept. Okay. Yep. If it's not, all right, then we take accountability for that because we know it's easier to catch. And we use subcontractors too, right? Like we're not all employees. So especially important in that situation, because you're not going to pay a subcontractor out until all of the quality controls. And if you wait till you let your customer find that out, or you wait till there's a leak or anything like that, yeah, well, now you have a problem. problem. Yeah. The so here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you start a subcontractors off that way, and they know that we're doing that inspection. They know because it only takes one time to go through and we correct all the details. For, the first job is usually a train wreck for a subcontractor. We have them going back and fixing everything. And, they, and if they make it through that and they follow, they know that we're serious. Too many times I see a lot of companies that they say they have quality standards, but how are they enforced? Yeah, it's a bit of a moving target too. Everybody's right. quality or idea of quality is completely they make it they make it a qualitative um, right. you know, opinion where it's always ours is quantitative. Right. Yeah, ours is quantitative. It's black and white. Which is cool. Okay, so like, you know, empowering um, mm -hmm. the inspection process. And it's all it mm -hmm. all kind of ties into like communication, which is one the 100%. Right? Right. Um, right. And you mentioned that a little bit and communicating along the entire process of the of the project. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, go, go over that if you have. Yeah, so we use a product called Company Cam. All right. Um, company cam is basically all of our trades and all of our staff are required to upload every four hours of the work they're doing at certain checkpoints, at certain milestones. And if they don't, well, that's a, that's a problem for us, but that's our way of communicating. It's through pictures and proof evidence. Like show me, you put the, you know, synthetic felt on, show me, you know, when the roof is ripped off, show me like, that's how we keep our crews, um, you know, diligent. And what it allows us to do is that we don't have to be everywhere at once. So we, you know, again, we, everybody can see from the master view of all the projects that are going on. And we see right there. And that's where notes are made. That's where they can reach out to another crew leader even and have them look at the job. Hey, what do you think of this? Like, how should I do this? And like, we have, you know, guys that do it all the time where, you know, they run into a tight spot. They may look back at another project. If they call in, we'll be like, hey, here's a detail of it being done. Like, it just, that's communication in my eyes is Dude. where you have it, you know, right there for everyone to see. And I mean, it makes our lives easier. The other thing is when we catch things early, when you catch something early, okay, it, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Right. It's only a problem when you don't catch it and the customer does, or, you know, it, it causes a problem down line. To me, again, that's an opportunity when we catch it early. That's an opportunity to correct it so it doesn't happen again. 
And yeah, it takes a little more time. But if you don't have eyes on your on your job sites, and you know we're being creative, we're using technology um, where our foremen are reviewing those jobs, we're looking at those photos. That, like again, we have some crew leaders that are able to look at all the jobs that are going on, and they catch things. They annotate them. They draw. You know, give us you know explanation, and they'll they'll call things out because that's the culture that we're creating. That's the business that we want to run. At the end of the day, if, if you know all it takes is a couple of you know mistakes, and your reputation is destroyed, well, that affects everybody in the business for sure. Right? So, uh, company cam is an incredible piece of technology. You know mm -hmm. that it was actually the founder was a roofer. Yep, looks like he yep, got I do. there first. Yeah, <laughs> for no, sure. Awesome piece of fact. Um, maybe if I can like introduce a fourth, and I, I don't know what, where you stand about this, but relationship with your customer. Um, mm -hmm. Like I've had, I've had a, a few instances where I bump into a customer, maybe even six months down the line of a project being completed and just to follow up with them. And, you know, there was some things that, that, you know, needed to be fixed, but they didn't bother me. They didn't, they, you know, and I asked them why, you know, why didn't you call me? You know, we'd come and fix it. Oh, I, I didn't really want to bother you guys. You know, like there's that level of respect, like almost like I don't want to be wrong about you. Like we have a good relationship, you know, like right. you're my friend, but uh, you see that a little bit differently, wouldn't you? Yeah. I would see that as wildly overselling <laughs> and that we're, we're now friends and like we're on that level. Um, again, you know, to which his own, I mean, if that's your, if, if you've got skills in that way to make people feel that, that way about you and, and you've produced for them. But, you know, my, my suggestion to that is, you know, even, we should always separate what what is a transactional business, you know, business the relationship, and what is a you know a personal relationship. There's got to be a very clear boundary, sure. and as you scale, you'll find that that those boundaries have to be kept really clear. The reason why is you don't want salespeople over committing, over promising, and they again they it happens so easily. The other thing is, I would say it's still a breakdown of process because you know had you walked the customer through with a punch list and been like, hey. You know, I want to make sure you're super happy. I want to make sure everything is caught or even a survey afterwards where it's not directly with you. Mm -hmm. And you implemented that. You're going to find that people, um, again, that certain type of people, you're right. They won't say it. But if one person is having that experience, there's 10 others that are too, right? You want to get to the bottom of that to make sure that we're learning our lesson. We're not making the same mistakes because it will haunt you, right? It will. And, and again, it can be silly things, right? It can be silly things. Easy yeah, solutions. Makes, yeah, it makes perfect sense because like relationship, you know, it doesn't work at scale, right? Right. And it's it's a little bit, and that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to bring companies right. to scale. Like again, process process is, you know, it protects you, right? Yeah. Because even if you're great at building those relationships, let's let's continue to make that the focus of our business. But let's not ever let anybody down. All right. If that's truly what our 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 intent is. Um, and give them a way of communicating what they're not satisfied with. And I mean, it's a very simple thing, but let me tell you, that customer that you talked to probably could have referred you to 10 more people, right? Maybe you still got two or three, but like, again, when you really hit it on the mark and smaller contractors have this opportunity where they can take and just like bring a customer beyond a review, a positive review. Yeah, that guy's good to a raving fan that's going to go out and tell the world how great they are. Okay. When you hit that, your business can grow organically without you. Okay. And, and I mean it sincerely, like that is a part of process. That's what we're all like. That's where you should be always thinking of where you want to end up with a customer is taking them past review into raving salesman fan where they tell everybody, just like if you did a bad job. And again, it's just that last little 1%. Like it could have been, Hey, you know what? I had to touch up the mortar here or there. Like, you know, there was little scratches or something so simple to resolve, right? It didn't cost you more time. If you have the customer there, take them through, do a punch list. I love the punch list only yeah. for a reason is I'm showing accountability to them. Hey, this is my standard for quality. Here's what I'm checking, right? Here, here's the, the, the paperwork to go with it. We inspected it. We did it like boom. And, and I mean, again, that's where they're like, oh, wow, these guys like not only did a great relationship, but like. They listened, they heard, they did, like they, they were, you know, accountable to any mistakes. Like I would recommend these to anybody leave yeah. that 1% out though. And they're going to have that, like, Ugh. you know, was it bad? Was it me? Like, could it have been better? Like, but they're not going to, they're not going to ever say it to you like in that situation. 
And to me, that that's that's still a loss, right? Because now, you know, even if it's 10 years down the road, you get a referral from that person or they, they back you up. Well, I mean, you've just made more money, right? Yeah, you've just made more to, customers. That's another way to look at it. Like, I mean, right now we're, we're you know, we're going after trying to increase our profits and, and pick up yeah. things that are left behind and try to do better. But at the end of the day, if we continue working with a deficit of work, they just bleed. And then that happens at scale. Mm -hmm. quality control issues happens at scale it follows you along the way so right I, and if I'm, you're production based you you want to yeah. you want to think about it this way all right now if we look at why mcdonald's is so unbelievably successful they're they they take teenagers and they produce a billion dollars in business a day right or something stupid like that okay think about all the checks and balances and processes like it's not just showing up and frying up a burger is it Right? No, they have checks, balances that a child can do it. That's right. right. So in your business, what you're always trying to do is you want to take something that's complicated, all right, which in your job, in my job, like these are complicated, hard to do things. And you want to simplify them down to the to the point where it takes average people to do an extraordinary job every time. All right. So why checklists? Checklists as simple as this. On my pre-roofing inspection, we have 103 separate check boxes. And for different things that have happened over the years, like, I mean, I can't even tell you, like, things on there that you'd be like, How, why would you even <laughs> ask? Gross. Like, is the wall collapsing? Can you check for me, please? And right? Who thinks but, of that until it happens. Well, until it's happened, right? Until you know. had a house collapse on you and be like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, maybe I should have checked for that. But it takes though that many things. You, now, J Johnny, like, you've got a pretty great memory. I do not. I couldn't remember 173 things, no matter how many years of practice I have at it. Yeah, right. There's that. still things I look at. I'm like, oh, but now you put somebody else that's brand new or maybe doesn't know your business that well. And you you explain it to them through a check and balance system. All of a sudden, now they're looking for the things you want them to. And you don't have to shoulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda, woulda, sure. coulda. Like now they're following steps versus. And again, they can have an off day. You can have an off day and still be on the ball. One hundred percent. That's where that's where these things and these systems that's where they play such a role is that it shouldn't require somebody that's an absolute all-star on their game all the time because we know that's impossible. You want to take average people on a day-to-day -day, you know, thing and be able to go through each step with a high, high success rate. Simple as that, right? For sure. So, I mean, you want to hold yourself accountable, build that checklist. Like again, you know, for something that might take you a day or so and uh, the systemize, like now you have something that you're going to use as a marketing tool at the end. They sign off. They're happy with everything. Like everything was checked through. No problems with collecting payment. How does that help you to scale? It's huge. And it's right. a hell of a lot better. I mean, you, you say I have a, a good memory about that stuff. I couldn't remember that big of a checklist, but I don't have to right. because naturally I do it. It's, it's my business. I have, I right. have the advantage of fear. <laughs> and yeah. my crews don't well right? but but again if you want to fix the problem have them fill out the checklist and that's and watch what happens right because now you've set the standard you've given them the tool right and they're making they're now taking that accountability on when they put their name beside it and they said yep i checked that it's a five it's a five it's a five now when we have the conversation of hey we got a call back you inspected this it's very black and white. It's not qualitative anymore. It's either you did or you didn't, right? So yeah. do we have a, you know? I'd love to get a, like everybody else's opinion. Like if you guys have any other, you know, things to contribute to this, how you manage your quality, put it in the comments below. Like we'd love to have this dialogue going on because it's something that's yeah. that, like it stops the bleed. Anything right. to help the community to stop the bleed. And the bleed's beyond just the profit you lose on the job. The bleed is well beyond that. If you want to really put it into perspective, bad quality on any job almost instantly makes sure that you're not going to be referred on to other customers because you've broken trust. Okay. 100%. So if we lost 2.88 jobs every time we had a quality control job or issue, all right, now I, I, I have a lower than usual cost to acquire a customer, but to me, that's $3,600. Right, just burning money, burning, yeah. burning. So it, it, you know, for what would have taken an hour to resolve, right? Happy customer, no problem. Like again, it doesn't require a high level of um, skill at the end of the day. No more than the installer should already possess, right? And you set the standards. So again, 
you know, all they're doing is confirming that they've met that standard, right? It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be an issue. But when it is, and by not having it there, we're losing not only the profit that we would have had by callbacks and lost customers and all that kind of stuff, but on top of that, we're never getting referred, right? And we, we've done all this, like, again, it's like doing 99% of everything that's right, leaving 1% out that costs you the, the game, right? And that's, that's an interesting way of look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, we pretty well covered everything. Jay, I'd like to encourage yeah. anybody that has any further questions, just reach out to Jay or myself and, and uh, let us know what you think. Yeah, absolutely. Great topic. See you again next week. All right, guys. Take care.